Hi friends, welcome back to the vlog. I want to first start out by saying thank you for any of you guys that watched my last video. I really do appreciate all your support on that video and being so vulnerable with you guys. I've never shared these details with you guys before. I started this channel when I started my bodybuilding journey. So you guys kind of met me along that start to my fitness bodybuilding lifestyle, but there was a whole lifestyle that happened pre-bodybuilding that I've never really shared on here before. But for today's summer cut episode, we are gonna get back into the grind of things. I wanna focus a bit more in today's video about the workout aspect, working out, kind of some tips and tricks I have there for you guys and what I'm doing. So I've got the whole squad with me, Bruce Wayne, the cameraman, and we're gonna go film some footage. I'm gonna take you guys through my entire workout, so let's go. Something I wanna mention about your workouts, you guys, is truly doing everything you can to make the most out of them. Your eating can be on track, your sleep, all the things, but the gym is really a great place to kind of hone in on making things better, making improvements and really making the most of your workouts. Pre-workout, a couple things I like to do that just seems to make my workouts that much better. Number one, making sure I'm coming into a workout hydrated. I haven't drank this yet, but I always bring this with me. I drink a bunch of water first thing in the morning. And the other thing I do is start my day by putting some fuel into my body. I don't like a lot before I work workout but I did do a protein shake this morning so it not only gives me hydration but my protein shake does give me protein carbs and a little bit of fat so for me that's kind of what's worked best to fuel my workouts so I have a little bit more energy to get in some extra reps speaking of hydration speaking of hydration and energy it is a little later in the afternoon Jason it's and I it's actually 11 30 oh uh, yeah it's not afternoon yet it's close I slept is it close to noon yeah, I slept really good last night because we got a new bed. I'll show you guys that later, but I slept very well. I need a little pick-me-up right now just to get into leg day. We're gonna work legs, biggest part of our body, and really, I just wanna crush this workout. So, sip on this. We are gonna start with some mobility work taking you through one of my lower body days. I've got a four day split right now with a fifth optional day. So I'm essentially doing two upper body days, two lower body days. So I'm gonna take you through today's lower body day. But first, one of the things to really capitalize on your lower body days is starting out your workouts with some mobility and really warming up the lower body, warming up actually your whole body prior to jumping into the workout. So we're gonna start that before we hop into the workout. The first movement of today's workout is the glute hip thrust. Now, at my gym, we're at Crunch Fitness here in Syracuse. I am using the glute drive machine is what it's called. It's essentially the same movement. I do feel like if you set up the barbell, you're gonna probably get additional benefits from that. However, keeping this realistic with my time that I am willing to a lot in the gym, if you will, this machine is so much quicker. It takes away all that setup time, so I do prefer to use this machine. One thing I want to say with this movement is form is obviously critical in every movement, right? But one thing you're going to see me doing throughout the workouts today is making sure I'm working with the proper weight for my rep range. So this movement, I'm doing four sets today, rep range of eight to 12. And with this current weight on my first set, I did a warm up set, but with this current weight, I was only able to get eight reps, which is on the lower end. I prefer aiming for the higher end of reps, so I am gonna lower my weight in effort to get more reps. That's just kind of how I like to go about it. I do want to mention the fact that I did about 10 minutes of mobility work and activating my glutes prior to starting this workout. I feel it in my glutes tenfold. So it goes a long way to give yourself that proper warm up to make sure you are activating the glutes before hopping into the workout. You're looking a little extra lean today. Am I? I don't, is it, what's, what's this? This is the Buff Bunny Collection Phantom Jacket. This I like how it's like fitted, right? Form fitting. I, I can like it too. I can actually see like your progress better. This is one of my favorite zip downs they've ever done. I think they still have it available in the flame color, which I kind of want to pick up. But yeah, really comfortable. This may not seem like a workout tip to you guys, but something that I think is super important 
is coming to the gym in, in clothing that makes you feel comfortable and confident, right? So that could vary depending on the day or maybe depending on your workout. Today I knew I was doing glute hip thrusts, I knew I was doing legs, so I wanted to wear a workout outfit that I feel confident in and comfortable in. So sometimes that can make or break the workout. Next movement is the wide stance leg press. So I'm doing the angled leg press here. For me, I make sure that I do an appropriate weight where I kind of push slowly through the movement. I, you'll notice in a lot of my movements, I like to go a little bit slower, really focusing more on making sure I'm pushing in the right places, pushing with the backside of my body and just taking my time with it. To get appropriate form on this, I do like to use the lines here to make sure my feet are lined up properly and that I'm kind of keeping the right angle so that I'm not tweaking one side of my body or the other. Uh, that hard? Those are so much harder than it looks. I haven't done these in a super long time, but I brought over a weight. Don't have an ego. If you need to drop the weight, drop the weight and do the movement correctly. So ego check on this one. I feel like the backside of my body is already super fatigued so we're doing good while i'm thinking of it too guys like a lot of you say i do my workouts and i'm not sore afterwards soreness is not an indicator of a good workout i will say what's an indicator of a good workout is how you're feeling during the workout are you sitting there on your phone resting for extended periods of time not really feeling the movements especially on leg day things should feel a little wobbly as you're progressing through each and every movement. You should feel it when you're walking out the door that you just hit leg day. If not, you maybe aren't pushing enough. He's always gotta cuddle himself into something. <laughs> always. True. Those were hard as shit. Oh man, so I used a band to do some pulse squats, which those, check your ego real quick. I started with a heavier dumbbell. Don't be afraid to stop and, I mean, finish your set out, but know when to lower the weight. I personally like to approach my sets with trying to like go as heavy as I can. And if it's too much, then you drop the weight down. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so that, that just murdered me for sure. Like, I should mention too, this is my first time going through this workout. Brian wrote me a new training split. So I'm still like going through each of the workouts. It's very new to me, so that's why I'm slowly dying and fading here. And it takes like a couple weeks to get used to new yes, workouts. Yes, that's like, the other even, thing. Even like mentally, it's like you have to keep looking at what you're doing. Yeah. And then it ends up taking like... Yeah, almost. I had to Google or like YouTube a couple things, make sure I was doing the right movement like for week, how he Z wanted press me to. That we did. I never did a Z press right. before. Right, yeah. So anytime you enter like a new training split to make sure you're getting the most out of it, you probably need to capitalize by like giving yourself a bit more time the first couple of weeks to get through the workouts and make sure you're, you know, you get kind of a flow with it and it'll get quicker, but it takes a little bit more time when you're first starting it. So even so finishing up my workout, I just got through leg, lying leg curls. Lying leg curls. Lying leg curls. Leg extensions. Leg extensions. And then finished up with two sets of seated calf raise. Uh, my legs are shot. One of the things I wanted to mention to you guys too that I do with Brian, and you maybe saw me throughout the video, I don't know, picking up my cell phone a lot in between sets, what I do is I have a spreadsheet that Brian sends me. So part of capitalizing on your workouts and really making sure you're getting the most is tracking what you're lifting. And this has been so helpful. This has been a game changer for me with my lifts and progressively getting stronger is actually tracking how much weight, how many reps I'm getting. Each week as I build upon this, I try to either get more reps or bump up the weight and make improvements. Not every week is gonna be a week lifting heavier, lifting more. You may have to back up a bit, but for the most part, this has really helped me progress with my strength. And I'm definitely feeling much stronger now that we're at like the eight, nine week point in this process. I can tell I'm getting stronger, I'm being more consistent, and it's cool. It's cool. It's the most beautiful I've ever seen one of these dogs in real life. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> He's like what? What? he doesn't know personal space, That's so. It's funny because I have a five pound dog and it's just the comparison makes me feel so it's much more right? like, mm -hmm. Baby probably asks him this is a lap dog. Oh, yeah. I just got a, uh, a pit bull a few months ago. Do you want to be best friends? Sits on me. Yeah. Has to be sitting on me. Yep. Oh my god, he's He good. wants to show everyone his ball now. Yeah. Yes, of course. It's, it's your so ball. It's in your mouth. It's in his mouth. Oh. 
how much it's more. Just, it's just too big, you can't see it. <laughs> Yes. My goodness, thank you guys. You're welcome. Just make my day. Also, glad to hear it. Time for some post leg day nourishment. This is a crucial time of day. We have to refuel our bodies because I had such an intense workout. So I love having a nice big meal afterwards to help me with recovery and replenishment of muscle breakdown, glycogen breakdown, and all the things. So I've got a nice, beautiful lunch in front of me. I've got a fresh piece of haddock I cooked up on the stovetop with some Trader Joe's jasmine rice. And then I roasted some carrots in my herby organic sunflower oil. Mm, so good. You better be careful. I'm going to steal all those carrots on you. I know. I can't just like make my carrots anymore because now not only does Jason enjoy them, but so does Bruce Wayne. <laughs> this is a relatively low fiber meal. So one of the things that I love doing, and you guys have seen me use Bellway before. This portion of the video is sponsored by Bellway. Thank you to Bellway for working with me. I really enjoy Bellway. In particular, their psyllium husk product here. This is the Super Fiber Plus Fruit. It's organic psyllium with prebiotic fiber. And this is in the raspberry lemon flavor. I have a mixed berry flavor as well. I'm excited to have the little individual packets because I think these are gonna be great for when Jason and I travel just because sometimes fiber and regulation, bowel regularity, it gets a little challenged when we travel. Am I right? And I like these a lot too. Like these, these, are, these are really good. They taste really good. What's, I, out of all the fiber drinks I've ever had, yeah, definitely my favorite. Flavor. Right. And what's so nice about these is you take it, you mix it with like eight to 10 ounces of water. It mixes very easily and you just drink it. It tastes good. You don't have to do any crazy sorcery wizardry in the kitchen. It just mixes up and it tastes good. So it's really easy to get in that fiber that may be lacking in your diet. So each packet of these contains five grams of fiber. Mm, I really like the raspberry lemon flavor, but I've liked all the flavors I had had from them actually. I'm just gonna put that in there and still get clingy for a second. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it up with a fork. I wanted to just use a clear glass. That way you guys could see what it looks like. Or sometimes I'll just take this in a shaker cup too. That makes it pretty easy. Give it a little zhuzh. I think it's juiced up. I know, it was relatively quick, right? I don't like to let it sit there too long. That's one thing I'll mention, just because it will thicken being psyllium husk. But what's so great about this is making sure you guys get enough fiber in your diet, in particular the psyllium husk too, really does help with your overall gut health, which as we know, does play into our overall health, our entire being. It can play into mental health, your immune system, your ability to lose weight, your hair, skin, nails, like everything really, your gut health really impacts your total being. So really important if you guys are on this journey with me not to just be paying attention to the scale, I've told you this, nay nay, not to just be paying attention to that, other things such as how are you doing on your fiber? And this will also make us feel a bit more full, which is always much appreciated if you are in a weight loss journey and cutting calories. Mm. It's such a good flavor. Very light, there's nothing like, that's what I like about the ingredients as well, you guys. It is sweetened with a little monk fruit extract, but other than that, it's your basic ingredients in here. Oh, and I want to mention too, Bellway was nice enough to give me a discount code. So Kara20 will get you 20% off your first order with Bellway. That can be the super fiber. They also have a really great plant protein that contains fiber and some other items you guys can go check out. Now we have a fish truck that comes to the very, basically a mile down the road, parks at the farm Where does she every come Friday. from? Maine? She gets it in Boston, I believe. She gets her fish in Boston. In Boston. Does she live in Boston or does no, she No, live she lives here? probably around here. She lives around here, but she goes and she gets these fish that are shipped over. And it's awesome because we feed Bruce Wayne a raw diet and she saves us the scraps. Mm -hmm. So like every week she literally gives me like five pounds of fresh fish to give to Bruce Wayne. And it, the only bad thing about that is Jason and I are spoiled with this super fresh fish. Then now even when we go to like our grocery stores that have good fresh fish. Like Wegmans? It's just not, it's not as fresh and you can taste the difference, you right? You can, it's like, you bought swordfish. It's not that it's bad, but you can tell the freshness level is like, it's 10 out of 10 off the fish truck. Yeah, you bought swordfish from um, Wegmans and Wegmans is like top of the line grocery store around here. And yeah. I was like garbage. <laughs> Give me uh, the fish truck. 
I know. Not garbage, but you're like... John's oh, fish truck so, ran by so Cheryl. Far. Yes. It was John. He Shout sold it to his to daughter. John. Shout out to Shout out to Cheryl. Shout out to both John and Cheryl for <laughs> hooking us up. I'm going to suck this down first. Oh, I do want to mention too, the nice thing about these, you can have them up to like three times a day if you need. So one to three times a day. Drink it any time of day you like. I usually like to have it depending on what kind of day I'm having, but usually like morning or night or with like a big meal just to feel like extra full. And after leg day, that's one thing I wanted to mention too. I like kind of a bigger meal. I would say this is a decent sized meal, right Jay? Yeah, that's like a cup of rice, that's right? That's like a good, good amount There's of rice, like carrots, 50 and carbs, fish. So 50 yeah. Carbs, 30, oh, and 13. I ate a bunch of, um, 10 fat? I had a bunch of watermelon and cheese while this was cooking. Cheese? <laughs> the little Where did the cheese come from? The little baby bell light cheeses. I ain't into those. I Do I like those? I don't think you've ever had one. Maybe not. I like them. It was just like a nice little snack to have while I was waiting for this. And asking you to taste my fish? Sometimes I air fry it, but this I like better on the stove top. Good? Did you do good? <clears throat> I did real good. I like haddock so much. It's so flaky. Like it just, you go to take a bite and it like flakes, just flakes apart. No, Such a good white fish. Later, you do in that air fryer, right? Yeah. 10 minutes, 400 degrees. For anybody Swordfish? I mean, I just love fish. Swordfish is so good. Like when you air fry it, it gets like a buttery flavor to it, right, Jack? It does. Like it has a natural, like, and maybe it's probably the oils in the fish, but it just, it comes out when you air fry it. And every bite, you just taste like the salt and the butteriness yes. of the fish. You can Is eat it weird? plain, like nothing on it. I would suggest trying it plain first because seriously, there's so much flavor to swordfish. And just so everyone knows how we cook it, 10 minutes in the air fryer, 400 degrees, nothing on it, no oil, no spray, mm -hmm. and it cooks perfect easy peasy and then if you Lemon want squeezy. we throw some what garlic sea fish. salt on it sometimes yep. yep that's all it needs that's all it needs not even that but it's always fun how's that one mm. i feel like you're so close to my face right now because i am is it really close up it's wide angle so we're good oh cool see it's oh, kind of gives you a weird looking head okay like you can't tell the camera on um, people on the other side of the camera, but he's like this close to me while I'm eating. So I didn't know. Up close and personal. Heck yeah. Footage from that or not. Here we are again watching videos of our own selves. <laughs> that was when COVID first hit. Yeah, we used to go to like the college campuses because yeah. they're empty and like just walk around. So we I was just leaving this on for Bruce. I made a 10 hour anxiety dog video. Yeah. With just like peaceful footage. So the Corys have kind of had like a cozy, relaxing afternoon after you guys last saw us. We've just been laying around. I feel like Bruce suckered me into cozy world and we're catching up on some Big Brother. If you guys are watching Big Brother this season, let me know down below. We're fully caught up now. So I have my opinions of people. Um, do you have someone you want to win, Jay? Christian. You want Christian to win? Yeah, hair twin. Hair twin Christian. I I really like Derek X. Let's go with that I don't know if he'll win or not though, but I like Derek X and I like Tiffany. It's a squirrel. Yes, yes. The phlebotomist. I like her a lot. I, like her I feel a like lot she's too. super smart about gameplay and like she's I like them both. Like a she's lot, very yeah. logical. And I like Xavier a lot too, actually. Yeah. Yep. They're maybe my top three people. Um but anyways, we've been resting. You gonna get out of my shot, bro? Okay. Um G should I turn this down so you're not hearing my voice in the background? Yeah, you turn it down. Okay. It's so, like it's throwing me off. <laughs> Keep going. So Jason and I are gonna go out for a bike ride. I'm gonna use that as my cardio for the day. And while this whole video is kind of focused on making the most out of your workouts, I think you know, it's important to note that what's gonna work best for you is gonna be a little bit different. Um, for me personally, if my schedule allows it, I love separating my weightlifting session from my cardio session. I don't like doing back to back if I don't have to. I almost never do that anymore. Number one, I just don't like being in the gym that long. 
Um, we are in the gym for about an hour and a half today, right, Jay? Hour and a half. And so, then, and then also you can't put full effort in either one. That's how I feel too. Like you really, it's hard to you're going to be compromising. So whichever one you choose to do first is going to get the majority of your mm -hmm. energy, your attention, your dedication. The second thing that you do is going to be your focus is going to drop, and your energy, obviously the energy, but right. the, the focus thing people don't think of. I used, I used to do that a lot during prep, mm -hmm. like just to get it done. Type mentality. I do my cardio like before or after, and I'd always always just kind of like do it to get it done. I wouldn't actually put in any effort. So while I understand that everyone's schedules can accommodate this, I'm only doing three sessions of cardio a week, you guys. And I do enjoy doing cardio on a leg day. I do. That's why I made the so video for, for dog anxiety so like when people so leave the sweet. house, they can just watch this. Oh, he loves us. It's actually really peaceful to watch. It is, yeah. I'm sorry, um, but it was just too cute. I had to no, look at him. that's okay. I love that. Oh, he's all comforted. Oh, what was I going to say? But yeah, I'm only doing three sessions of cardio a week right now, and I do enjoy doing cardio on a leg day. Definitely not right afterwards. But later in the day, I feel like it does kind of help move my legs around. I've been sitting the most of the afternoon, so this will help kind of move my legs around. The lactic acid kind of like moved out of there and hopefully not be as sore, you know, to just kind of stretch me out and get more movement in but i just wanted to mention that there is no like necessarily there's not necessarily a perfect combination of timing of your workouts and how to go about doing it you do have to do what's easiest for you to maintain what's realistic for you to actually get it done so sometimes it is just getting it done out of pure convenience it's better to do it than not do it right but for me with my cardio i do really enjoy separating it which is why i also like having the peloton down in the basement too because i really i'm able to get it done anytime i want i don't have to like be at the gym to do cardio or have good weather outside to do cardio so and also like separating and if, how you do cardio then towards the end of the day you've eaten a lot of your food by the end of the day so it just helps with digestion as well it does actually i really find that like if i do my cardio later at night it it does help with digestion. I feel like it gives me a little temporary burst of energy, so I don't recommend doing it right before you're gonna try to go to sleep. But I do find getting that extra burst of like caloric expenditure at nighttime does help me kind of wind down and sleep better, which sleep again is also critical to the whole process here with having efficient workouts and effective workouts being rested and recovered. So you cannot neglect the sleep component either. Can you show them the new bed? It's not made. We can't show them an unmade bed. You have to make it. That'd be we sloppy. You told them earlier you're gonna show them. I know. So now I gotta make the bed then first before we go for a bike ride. Okay. Be right back. So this is our new king size bed. I kind of. Like kind of. We're missing. Yeah, I feel like it looks a little bachelor right now because we don't have the headboard. So we're getting like one of those big headboards that'll go behind it like an upholstered one we'll see how it looks obviously we're going to remove the photos and we're probably going to paint the whole room to brighten it up in here so kind of over the dark blue jason also got with it um these are all organic all new bedding i know it's really wrinkly looking i don't know what else to do about it other than try to steam it out which i don't really care that much do you jay i don't care it'll kind of come out naturally we'll hang out in our bedroom we sleep and, and do do fun things in here. <laughs> um, but so we upgraded to the king size from the queen. It was a game changer. And it for goes me. up and down. The other one, yeah, did too. our other one did too. But it's nice. We have the option to like incline it, the feet, the head. There's like a massager situation. I don't really care for that. It's more just like vibrations, honestly. But the pillows are bigger too, right? We got new pillows, yep. all new bedding. Really comfortable. The white's a little scary just because of makeup and like self tan type stuff but and we, a dog and a dog but i mean we wash our bedding regularly anyway yeah. so i feel I mean, like you can always get another set too that's dark if anything like having a white bed set will probably wash it as more frequently which isn't a bad thing with allergies and stuff you know but it's so nice let me get on it so you can see how little i look on this big bed you look a little i got so much room now it was amazing. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, wait, where'd all this space come from? Like, 
and then I'd feel over here and I wouldn't even be touching you, Jay. Like I was all the way spread out and I wasn't even touching you. It feels so good. Are my feet dirty? Yeah, should... no. It's so nice. Comment below if you have a king size bed or a queen size or a twin. I don't know. What are you sleeping in? I want to know. So far, pretty pleased. Are you, Jai? Uh, yeah, I slept good. I wasn't sore at all. Yeah, like, changing Jay beds didn't screw me up. Jason, norm like, last mattress we had, Jason, literally his back and stuff, I think you were sore for, like, a couple weeks. Yeah, when we first got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took me a while to adjust. This was easy peasy. That was nice. It's like hybrid memory foam slash spring. Sattva. It took us a while to research yeah, no, it, too. You didn't tell anybody what we got. Sattva. S-A-A. I was going to say sativa. V-A? S-A-A-T-V-A. Sattva. Yeah, sattva. Um... You, you can do a quiz on their website. That's what we did to kind of figure out what was best for like two people sleeping together and like how you sleep. So it is kind of important to look up that kind of stuff. So. I think so. And for us, it's kind of firm. And I like it. It is, but it, yeah, that was supposed Even to Even though it's kind of memory foam. So yeah, it's really comfortable. Yeah, it I'm is. so happy with that. Yeah. Cool. Bike ride? Bike ride. Let's go. Let's do it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog thus far. If you have, be sure to stop right now, do all the things. Make sure you smash the like button and that you are subscribed to the channel. You can also hit that little post notification bell. That way you guys are notified each and every time that I do upload. I want to drill down a bit more talking about exercise and intensity. I do want you guys to comment below for those of you that are on this journey along with me, how things are going with your workouts. And if you can honestly say you're putting for, for putting for and if putting for effort in putting forth full effort. I don't know why that was a hard statement, but let me know below. I can tell you, honestly, I definitely have not been. And sometimes that's just what season of life you're in. As I stated, it's better to have a workout than no workout. However, if you're someone that's getting frustrated that you're not seeing results, I see many clients very quick to want to like slash their calories, right? They're like, I'm not seeing changes. What's going on? I need to eat less. And that's usually not even the case. You guys, for me personally, my approach is always to eat as much as possible to be able to maintain your strength, feel strong, feel energetic. My last resort is usually slashing calories or any kind of macros. Let's focus a bit more on the workouts. Now, for some of you that maybe can't fit workouts into your lifestyle right now, yes, you have to focus on nutrition. But for those of you that are focused on incorporating moving your body more, getting to the gym, whatever it may be on your fitness journey, the workouts we really can and should pay a bit more attention to. Now, I just enjoy working out, but I know that can be a harder aspect of the whole weight loss journey for those of you that don't really enjoy working out. But here's the thing. Why not work harder, not smarter? No. <laughs> you are killing these I'm today. Kill nailed it. I think I need a coffee. Don't steal mine. I got some vegan protein in my coffee, my cold brew. What's that from? Mallrats. Some porn you're watching? I have no clue. Who's or is it from Clerks? This sounds like you're sucking a D. That's what it's from. Oh, okay. That's what they do. <laughs> I guess that was right. Sounds like you're listening to watching the porn. But let's talk about working smarter, not harder, if you are committing to gym sessions. Now, yes, yesterday's session that I shared with you in this video was such a good session for me. I felt like I was really in my zone. I was paying attention to my workouts and nothing else. But ask yourself what you guys are doing in the gym and if it could potentially change to more benefit you. For example, I do work out with Jason quite a bit. I enjoy working out with Jason, but I will admit those are not my most intense sessions because I sometimes get roped into, I make it sound like it's your fault, Jay, but like I'm more in like, we'll chat in between sets, which is fine, you're resting. But sometimes when I work out with someone else, regardless of who it is, I'm just, I can't get in my zone as much. So assess what type of person you are. Sometimes it's great to have a gym partner because it holds you accountable, yes. But do you feel like you're working to your full potential in the gym? Also, I agree. My worst workouts are with you. I love working out with you though. Yeah, but it's but we're not, on a different level. Yeah, we're like on a, for one, it, yeah. it's, it's hard. Like 
that's a good tip. Try to work out with someone if you do that's on your level. I'm obviously way stronger than you. Yeah. Switching out weights takes extra time. Yeah. It kind of throws off your focus. Our workouts are different too. Our like the, workouts are different. Our styles. The way we work out, our goals different. are different. Jason yes. and I's goals are different. So, and even sometimes you could have the same goal as someone. Maybe like in bikini prep, I always liked working out with someone else, but it was very variable, variable depending on who I chose to work out with, whether it was best for my sessions or not. Honestly, over time, I have felt like my best sessions are alone. When I put music in, when I'm not sitting on my phone doing scrolling socials, answering emails, or doing anything like that in between sets, it's when I get in and get out. I set a timer, I'm on a time limit, I hone in on my music, and I just make the most out of my workouts. The quote of the day and what I want you guys to remember is get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I'm someone that fortunately learned that with working with personal trainers. I never understood that concept before. That concept is what took me from running marathons and consistently getting the same exact time, right Jay? With the yeah. exception of literally two to three minutes, I continued to finish my races at four hours, four hours and five minutes. I did four or five marathons within that time frame. It wasn't until I began training with intensity and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable that I finally shaved like 35 minutes off my time and actually qualified for the Boston Marathon. So it's not always an easy concept to wrap your brain around, but there should be some level of un there should be some level of discomfort. I don't want to say discomfort like you're in pain, but it should be a little uncomfortable, it should right? Hurt. It, it should, should hurt a little. It should be hard. You should be out of breath. Sometimes you should be pushing to failure. You should be giving it all you've got in effort to see changes. Now, someone like myself, I was talking to Jason about this yesterday. You know, for me, where I'm at with how I've changed my body over the past 10 years, the muscle I've put on, I can quite easily maintain this. I'll be honest. I can take a week off from training, take two weeks off. I can do two to three training sessions a week. I don't have to be in the gym six days a week lifting to full intensity to maintain this physique. Very grateful for that. However, for me, taking it to the next level, if I do truly want to see physique changes, then I have to work outside of my comfort zone. I have to be more, um, not specific, I have to be more focused with my workouts to really push my body to really see changes. More purposeful? More purposeful. That's, a, that's, the, right that's, the, that's right the right word. That's better word. than focus. So more purposeful, um, especially for someone like myself. That's the difference. Some of you guys here may be beginners. Some of you may just be getting into fitness. Some of you maybe are advanced like myself, not meaning I'm sitting here like shredded year round. That's not what it means to be advanced or an athlete. That's false. Um, but I am advanced. I've been lifting for a number of years. I know what it takes for me to get uncomfortable in the gym and to push with full effort to see changes. So think about where you're at in your journey and what you're looking to accomplish. I think it'll go a long way if you really sit down and make sure you're doing some things differently in the gym just to make your time more worth it. Yes, a workout session's better than none, but why not make it worth it? So if that means telling your friend, Karen, she, you know, you're going to do your own gym session. If that means staying focused in your headphones and kind of minimizing some of the socialization that we know can occur in the gym. And that's fine too. But sometimes you have to kind of, I put up like flags, like, don't look at me. I'm in a rush. I try to really put off those vibes, not bitchy vibes. So if you see me in the gym and you want to say hi, please do come over and say hello to me. I swear I'm a nice person, but I try to kind of have my hat down. I make it known I'm in a rush. I'm on a time limit and I'm just here to get shit done. You can put those vibes out and it will sometimes help minimize some of the socialization that can occur. I think setting a time or two can be helpful too. Not saying like you should only be in the gym a certain amount of time, but it can kind of keep you mindful of how much time you're resting in between sets. How long is it taking you to accomplish movements? Um, and just being more mindful of where your time is going to when you're in the gym. So those are just a few tips that I use. You got any, Jay? Anything else? I think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. Okay. I think you covered it. Covered it all? Out. All right. I know this vlog today was a little bit different, being more workout focused. I hope you found it hope hopeful. Fuck, man, I can't talk today. <laughs> 
I hope you guys did find this video helpful in this overall series. Don't forget, I do have a whole playlist. You can go to the Summer Cut series and watch all the episodes I've posted thus far. I would also like to hear from you guys what more below you would like to see more of as I continue through this cut series. Let me know what videos you find most helpful in this journey, and I will see you guys in the next one. Good job, baby. Peace. Thanks, doll.